said, I have been uh, 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 chosen to be in a drama play. And he was all excited about that and everything. And he was telling his dad, I'm going to get to be in this play, and I'm excited to be my first one and, and everything. And his dad finally asked him, he said, son, what are you going to, what's your part? What are you going to play? And he said, well, I'm going I'm to play a, 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 a husband been married for 34 years. And the dad looked at him and said, well, maybe next time, son, you'll have a talking part. So, um, <laughs> anyway, okay. All right, that went over good. Can I make everybody mad now? <laughs> oh, mate, my, you know, it's like mother-in-laws. I, I like mother-in-laws. You know, my wife had a good one, you know. <laughs> Don't get that? My wife had a good one. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> take your Bibles and turn or you start throwing tomatoes and everything at me. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to pick on Peter again. <laughs> Bless his heart. Uh, I wouldn't plan on preaching it, but the Lord <laughs> wanted me to, so I'm going to I I hit prayer. I got him this morning, so I can get him a little bit again tonight. <laughs> but uh, amen. Bless God for Peter. Amen. I want to tell you, he... Uh, He's, a, he's the one that stood up when they said, uh, uh, said uh, uh, in John chapter 6 and verse 66 where it says, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. The Lord said, turn to the twelve and said, we all so go away. And Peter said, where can we go? You're the ones that have eternal life. So Peter didn't always make bad choice. He just a lot of times stuck his foot in his mouth like a lot of us do. But in John, uh, Matthew chapter 26, look me would at verse 31 and uh, we're going to skip a few verses. I'm not going to read the, the whole chapter and everything. You'll, it'll be familiar to you. Uh, the Bible said, Then said Jesus unto them, all ye, have, <clears throat> all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I have risen again, I will go before you unto Galilee, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended, be offended because of thee, yet I will never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, this, uh, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet I will not deny thee. Likewise, also said all the disciples, then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and he saith unto, uh, unto his disciples, sit here while I go yonder and pray. Go ahead and look on down, if you would, at verse 67. Jesus is hauled into uh, uh, to, uh, Caiaphas, into the high priest, and in the judgment seat, and judgment hall. And you see here in verse uh, 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 66, it says, What think ye? Uh, uh, they answered and said to him, "His guilty of death." And uh, and then they did spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with a hand, uh, with their palm of their hand, saying, "Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee?" Then Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, "Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee." But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he had gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto him that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said unto Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crow. And Peter remembered the words of the Lord, which said unto him before the cock crow, Thou should deny me thrice, and he went out and wept bitterly. Turn, if you would, to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. I want to read two verses out of the same uh, story here. It's being told 
uh, about Peter. Look, if you would, at verse 60. Chapter 22 of Luke in verse 60. And Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the words of the Lord. How he had said unto him before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your word, dear Lord. I thank you for the Liberty Baptist Church here. I thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for Pastor uh, Brooks. And I just pray that you bless him while he's gone. Bless the church family. I pray, dear Lord, the ones that need uh, healing and strengthening, I pray that you'll do that in their own lives, the ones that could not be here for other reasons. Lord, I pray that you'll help them deal with their life. Lord, we'll just trust you for everything uh, that is done in their lives. Lord, we thank you for everything that's going to be done tonight. We pray that you'll use your spirit to touch our heart with your word, and we'll give you the thanks and praise for everything that's done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to preach a message entitled, The Cussing Preacher and the Preaching Rooster. The Cussing Preacher and the Preaching Rooster. Now, I will tell you, this story starts out at probably the darkest hour in our Lord's life. I mean, up to this point, he has been through a lot of trials, a lot of mocking, a lot of tra uh, traps being set for him by the Pharisees to try to trip him up and try to discourage him. But you see here at this point, Jesus is fixing to go to the cross. He is headed to Calvary, and he knows he's fixing to go up to the judgment hall, and he asks to go to Gethsemane up there where he can pray, where he says, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. Now, Jesus had a will. He said, if it's possible, I don't want to do this. I want it to pass from me. But nevertheless, Lord, it, it, Father, it's not my will, it's your will. That's what every one of us as believers ought to say. Lord, it's not my will, but it's your will. I want to do your will. I want to serve you. Yes, it's tough, but I'm going to serve you. Amen? There's a lot of things we go through. Life's hard. It's hard to get up sometimes and go to church when you're hurting and don't feel like it or, or other things come up. It's hard in life when you've got to deal with with finances or somebody ill or sickness and all that. But we ought to be able to say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Right. But Jesus, in the darkest hour of his life, he didn't want to take the cup of sin and drink that. And he didn't want to face the horrible humiliation that would be on the cross. He, uh, Jesus here was, although going through all this, he realized that it was for this cause that he came into the world. This is why he was here. But yet, as being the son of God, he didn't want to take the sin of the world. Well, I could understand that looking at God Almighty. God hates sin, right? And when he was punishing his son on the cross, he turned from him. It became darkness everywhere. So you can see what was going on in Jesus' life. You can imagine Satan's temptation. They don't love you. They really hate you. When they're mocking you, you're trying to save these people and they don't want you. You can imagine the great temptation that was come upon our Lord and Savior. But Peter, bless his heart, like so many of us, we do open our mouth so often without our brain being engaged, right? And uh, I don't know about you, but I've done that often, you know. And uh, But, you know, Peter's boasting of, uh, of something that he's going to do. In the flesh, he said, "Listen, no, the whole world forsake you. I'm not." Basically, what he's saying, I'm, "If I die, I'm going to stand with you." You know, and how many of us agree with that? If somebody come in here said, "Hey, you deny Christ, I'm going to shoot you." We said, "No, I ain't denying Christ. Just go ahead and shoot." But you know, the devil's smarter than that. He gets us in a situation where we want to compromise. We want to give a little bit here and a little bit there, and that's what he tries to trip us up on. He's smarter than just doing something point blank. He wants to trip us up. He wants to entrap us. And he sure uses everything he can to allure us into some kind of trap to get us in a compromising situation. Sometimes, you know, the devil can use a person or possessions to get our attention away from Christ. But I will tell you, when we're looking at this here, we see this. 
Here, the Lord uses something very small, a rooster. Somebody not give any second thought about. But yet the Lord uses sometimes the small things to convict us of the great things in our life that need to be getting rid of. And he'll use a person or he'll use possessions or he'll use something else. I had a, a, my pastor, when he was uh, 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 started a church up in uh, Wolverton Mountain. Anybody know where Wolverton Mountain is? Wolverton Mountain's in Arkansas. It's over there by Cleveland County. Well, across from the ridge of that was another city, and he started a church across from Wolverton Mountain. And uh, he uh, was out knocking doors, and he went up and knocked on this. Uh, well, he didn't actually knock on the door. He got out of the vehicle. And as he started walking up to go knock on the door, a black lady came out of the house and started walking down the steps. And they met at the bottom of the steps. And when they got down to the steps, they looked down, and there were feathers on the ground laying out there, just all over the place. And so they, he, she starts walking, following these feathers, and he's going with her, talk to her, talk to her. They go around the corner of the house, and there's her dog with chicken feathers all over his mouth and three dead chickens. And she's got, so he, he, he said, well, look at there. You know what they say? You can't teach old dogs new tricks. And she just answered, uh-huh. And she went over and grabbed that first dead chicken by the legs. And she went to beat, grab that dog by the collar and went to beating on that dog till all she had left was two legs. She reached down and got another. And she went to whipping on that dog. And when she got through with that second ticket, chicken, she reached in and grabbed a live chicken and set it beside that dog and turned that dog loose. And that <laughs> dog took off for the woods. Sometimes God's got to use the small things. To get us to realize that, hey, he wants us to go a different direction. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get hard headed. You know, not much, you know. But I got to be truthful. My wife's sitting right there, so she can tell you. So sometimes God's got to use some things, amen, to get my attention, to get me to, me to move different directions and, and to start thinking right. Have you ever jumped ahead of God or jumped ahead the wrong way? <laughs> a different direction. You tried to sidestep God. And I, I have done that guilty. But you know, I thank God for his grace and mercy that he don't give on, up on us, but yet uses something to bring us back to him. Now, I want you to see some things in this story here that I hope will be a blessing to you. First of all, the cussing preacher and the preaching rooster. First of all, I want you to know, Peter denied the Lord, but the rooster testified for the Lord. And a lot of times if we don't watch it, we're, we're like Peter. I mean, we get, we get around certain things, and, and instead of uh, being uh, boastful about the Lord, we'll kind of cower down. You know, the Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believeth, the Jew first and also the Greek. Anybody know anything about the Apostle Paul? He was bold for the Lord. I mean, he never backed down. If, if it was a king, King Agrippa, or who it was, if it was, if it was Caesar himself, he's going to testify of Jesus Christ. Amen? And that should be all of us doing this. But Peter here, he gets trapped because uh, uh, in the situation, he gets caught up, and he begins to deny the Lord. And that rooster sounds off. Now, I will tell you something. Don't think for one moment that if Satan could have shut that rooster up, he would have. If he could have stopped him, he would have. But he had no control over the situation God did. And I tell you, the situations in your life, you got to realize the Satan might want to destroy you, and he does. He might want to wreck your family, and he does. And he might want to ruin your job, and he does. But ain't none of that can happen with God in control of it. Right. Amen? God has to do that. The devil could not do nothing to Job until the hedge was down. Till God gave him permission. Listen, I want to tell you, we can trust in the fact how good God is and how absolutely we need to realize we can trust in God and be sound on that. And we, not need, we do not need to be ashamed of what Jesus did in our lives. Amen? Hey, this world's not our home. Amen? Hey, the world's dying and going to hell. And if we don't reach them 
and we're ashamed of Jesus, woe unto us when we face the Lord. And you'll see that in the story. I mean, Jesus turned and looked at Peter as soon as the cock crowed. The second thing I want you to look at is that Peter was ashamed of Jesus, but the rooster shamed Peter. Leave you with it, verse 69. Now Peter was without in the palace, and a Daniel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. Three times he's asked. Three times the response gets worse and worse and worse. It starts off denying. It ends up cussing and swearing. If we don't watch it, that's the way the devil moves us. He gets us around the wrong crowd doing the wrong thing, and he'll get you in a situation where you're compromised and you'll deny the Lord. Right. One way he gets us denied, he gets us where we won't even say anything. Right. We won't even say anything. We won't say we're Christian. We won't say, I go, I go to church. We won't say any of that. We'll just be hush-hush about it. Listen, I want to tell you, I don't want to ever be in a situation where I'm ashamed of Jesus, and by God's grace, I won't be. But if I try to do it in the power of the flesh, I'm going to fail every time. I'll be just like Peter. Peter, Peter, Peter here was claiming that he never knew Jesus, ashamed of the fact that he walked with Jesus over three years. I mean, he saw leopards cleansed, he saw the lame to walk. He saw the blind to see. He seen his mother-in-law <laughs> healed. I might give him that one. Uh, but, but he saw Jesus. He, he was the only one that walked on water with Jesus. If there anybody ought to say, hey, that's my Savior. That's my Lord. That's my Master. It ought to be Peter. It ought to be us. Who's going to praise the Lord if the church don't? Who's going to honor God if we don't? Who's going to raise godly children if we don't? Who's going to read their Bible if we don't? Who's going to preach the word if we don't? Who's going to witness if we don't? Well, we need to be busy about the master's business. Yeah, hey, if you trip up one time, you know, I got a, I got a deal. I, I, I got it in my Bible. I wrote it down. Pray in the morning before people. That means pray before you see somebody. Bible before breakfast. Before I eat anything physically, I read my Bible. The last thing is gospel light before good night. Give somebody a track. With somebody. Say, preacher, you do that regular faithfully? No, sometimes I forget. Sometimes I just don't do it. Sometimes I have forgotten. But I don't stop there. I don't get up the next morning and say, well, I didn't make it this day, so I'm just going to forget. No, I start all over. I get back in that routine. I get back to doing what I know I need to do. The more I read my Bible, the more you read your Bible, the more you grow in the Lord. The more you grow in the Lord, the more you have strength. The more you have strength, the more the Holy Spirit of God can bring all those verses you've been reading to your mind and your heart when you witness to someone. So uh, we need to realize that. You know in Matthew chapter 10, I think it's Matthew chapter 10. I hate to guess because I, I didn't even think about this verse. Might be Luke chapter 10, but Matthew chapter 10. Uh, yeah, look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse uh, 32. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. Boy, that's good. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father in heaven. Yeah, I don't want the Lord to be ashamed of me. I sure don't want to be ashamed of him. He saved my soul. I was on my way to hell. What in the world do I have to be anything ashamed about or embarrassed about when I talk about Jesus? Amen? I mean, I mean, I, I know for these uh, politicians saying God bless America and all that, but I want to say I want the Lord Jesus Christ to bless America. 
I want to name who he is, my Savior. Amen? I want to name him. You know, it, 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 uh, it, it, uh, it, it's the world that we're living in. But when you think about what all Peter went through and all Peter seen, but thank God for the rooster <laughs> and stood true and preached loudly for the glory of God. I mean, when he said, cock it in a new, that message was for one man. Amen. It didn't matter if anybody else heard it. Hey, hey, make it crystal clear. Right. He got the message. <laughs> yeah. How many times do you ever got the message? You know what? I went out and bought a trailer, a dually trailer. I was going to, after I had the MG and had to step down uh, from uh, doing some work, I slurred so bad I could not speak. I still do a little bit of it, but not near as bad. And so I, I said, well, I'm going to buy this dually trailer. And I'm going to take my skid steer. I had a skid steer at the time, and I'm going to do some, I'm going to just kind of go back to the dirt work. Well, the Lord took me out of that to go start a church. Mm -hmm. And... And so when me and my wife, when God finally told me, hey, I want you to go back, I was associate pastor, and when I stepped down from that, and God, I was in evangelism, and then God said, no, I want you to go plant a church. The Lord told me to sell everything. We sold our house, our business, and equipment all in one day. We had an auction and sold everything. Wow. We left there, we was homeless. <laughs> But my wife was bawling. <laughs> we was homeless. But you know what? It was good. So anyway, fast forward, I get a little better. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll go back to business, I, you know, and I'll just do that. And I jumped the gun. I didn't pray about it. Oh, yeah, now you know who you're putting up with. You know, this week, you know how sinful I am? I'm just as sinful as every one of you. That's how sinful I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't pray about it. My wife reminds me every now and then. But anyway, so I get this trailer. I pick it up, and I bring it over. We're going to pick my skits there. It's not hauled a thing. I get up on it, fall off of it, and broke my collarbone. Wow. I'm sitting by the two wheels, the doodly wheels, on the ground, sitting there, holding my shoulder. And the Lord begins to talk to me. I said, you shouldn't bought that trainer. Okay, Lord, what do, you want me, what do you want me to do? And I already called my wife and I said, can you come and get me? She knows when I call her and say, don't say nothing, but just come. She knows what's happened. So anyway, so she's, she's on her way over there and uh, me and the Lord's having a conversation. It's more, mainly one way, you know. And uh, so I had to end up selling that trailer. It took me a year to sell the trailer, almost a year to date. And I was trying to sell my skid steer and trying to sell my pickup so I couldn't haul something that big anymore, three-quarter ton, and I was selling the trailer. And the Lord didn't let me sell anything for a year. And when I sold the trailer, lost money on it, the Lord sold my truck and I made more money on it. The dealership called me and asked to give me more money for it than what I paid for it. The skid steer was a Kubota and Kubota during the, uh, after 20, uh, uh, was it 20, what, 2020? Is that when all the, the pandemic? Well, when after all that happened, uh, uh, the building of those things shut down because those countries wouldn't work and it was all. So they couldn't get any equipment in. So he called me, and the guy, there was a guy who really want one real bad, and I didn't have that many irons on it, and he ended up buying it and giving me $7,000 more than what I paid for it. And I sold all the attachments and everything, got rid of all of it. All because I said, you know, Lord, I made a mistake. I'm going to do your way. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to be real with you and tell you this is how life is. Uh, you know, that's the reason it's so important that we put God's, God's business first and trust the Lord on everything that we do in our life. But, but I want to give you the next thing here. And, 
And, and uh, I want you to see this. Peter was out of place. The rooster was in place. Think about that. Peter was out of place. The rooster was in place. What was he doing? He was warming himself by the ungodly crowd. You know the Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners? Huh? You know, you know, Tamar would have never been raped if it wasn't for a, a Benadad, I mean a Benadad, his friend. He was a very subtle man, the Bible says, and conjured up a lie. I will tell you, you get around the wrong crowd and warm yourself, and you get, that's what he did. He got himself by the fire around the wrong crowd, and he began to feel comfortable. And when you get to feeling comfortable around the wrong crowd, the devil's going to step in and try to you to ruin your testimony. My brother and us and my dad, years before I went to Bible college, was in business together. Me and my brother was all the way down to No Trivies Bend. No Trivies Bend is the last lock before the Mississippi River. And we're over there working on, on some roads for the park service or the Corps engineers, but it has to do with the, uh, the facilities around that area. So we're over uh, doing roads and stuff like that. And we had another guy working for us. He was lost a goose. <laughs> we go into the motel one night and uh, well, the first night we got down there and we all stayed in the same room, had uh, other beds. And so we get in there my brother at that time wouldn't live for God like he should. He'd be drinking and stuff like that. And he got to witnessing to this guy. And that guy turned and looked and he said, I want to tell you something. I would listen to a dog before I'd listen to you. Because all you've been doing is being a hypocrite in everything I've seen. And I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking. And I was in church, but I wouldn't in church, okay? And so, and I'm listening to that, and boy, that hit me like a ton of bread. I said, man, I can't believe this. And it wasn't long after I went to Myrtle, Mississippi, Camp Zion, and got myself right with God, got to serving God, but I'm telling you, the devil wants you to ruin your testimony. And the only way he can do it is get you out of place. You're in place. You're in the house of God. Amen. I know I'm preaching to the choir uh, uh, tonight because you're here in church. But I want to tell you, don't be warned. Don't get out of church. Look if you would at Psalms chapter 27. Psalms chapter 27. I love the book of Psalms. Amen. It's praises unto the Lord. They sing them. I want to tell you something. I think everybody ought to have a song in their heart, praise unto the Lord. And, uh, but I want you to notice uh, here what the Bible says. Um, verse 1, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength and my life. And to whom shall I be afraid? Verse 3, Though, though a host encamp about against me, my heart shall not fear. Through the war should rise up against me. In this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord. You ought to mark that down. This is King David saying that. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord to inquire in his temple. He said, I want to be in God's house Every time the doors open, I want to hear the singing. I want to hear the praising. I want to honor God. I want to inquire in his house. I want to know more about God. I want to learn God's word. I want to learn to walk by faith. I want to know what it is to experience the joy of the Lord in my heart. Amen. That's what we ought to be doing. I hope this water is mine. Is this water from this morning? Or did you drink out of this? Okay, I'm just checking. Right? I want to be like, I want to be in place. If Jesus come back on a Sunday, I want to be in his house. Amen? I'd hate to know I was at a football game. I like football. I like watching racing. I like all that stuff. But I want to be in God's house. I want to be around God's people. 
I love God's people. Amen. Amen. We're not perfect, but we love the same Savior. And we got the same God. And we can come in here, and you ought to be able to come in here and share your heart with each other, pray for each other, cry with each other, hug each other. Amen? We're family. You know, God's family is the only eternal family. Everyone else is going away. There will not be another Winston family after I'm in heaven. There won't be a Winston family. There won't be a Smith. There won't be a Jones. I don't know how many Joneses and Smiths might be in here, but there ain't going to be one. God's family is the only eternal family. I want to be in my place around my father's house and around my father's. And I want to be around my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to be found being in my place, doing the things God wants me to do. I don't want to get distracted. I don't want to be like Achan that got to busy for the Lord and then got attracted, distracted because he looked at that gold and silver and Babylonian garment and he took it. Did you know what that one act did? That one act caused not only him to lose his wife and his children and his cattle and everything else he owned by being stoned, but he caused 36 brothers and sisters, or brothers mostly because they was in battle, 36 of his brothers killed by AI in that battle. I'd hate to know I'd done something that caused somebody else to lose their life because I disobeyed God. Wow, preacher, you're really going to stream on that. Are you all right? I had a friend that got drunk and he had a guy in the truck with him. He was driving down. My friend lived, but the guy passenger died. We went up on Pettigene Mountain. How many of you have been to Pettigene? All right. We went to Pettigene when I was a kid. We was jumping across the, the falls on top, across the falls. Rick Nolan, he was two years younger than I. I was 16. He was 14. He jumped across there, slid off, and went off the falls and died. They had to air flight his body out of there. I saw his mother about 15 years later. She's still a wreck. She couldn't get over it. It all lost. He had my friend. I never witnessed to him. He's in hell today. During the white throne judgment, when I'm sitting there being a witness to all everybody that's being condemned, and if you're saved, you'll be there as a witness too. He's going to look at me and say, why didn't you tell me? You called me your friend, and you never told me about this place. You never tried to tell me, tell me about your Savior. Was you ashamed of him? I don't want that to happen to me, and I'm sure anymore, and I sure I hope you don't want it to happen to you. Peter blatantly lied in verse 74. He said, he began to curse and to swear. I know, do not know the man. But the rooster abundantly replied by saying, cock a doo 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 I want to tell you something. I don't know if that rooster had a bad night. I don't know if the hens kept him up. He could he kept him up all night or what. Or maybe the owner was throwing things at him the next morning. I don't know what. But he said, I got a job. My creator has given me a job to do and there's nothing going to stop me from completing God's purpose for me on this planet. And he got up and when he heard Peter say for the last third time he denied the Lord, he, he, he took a big gulf of air and said, Cock it in the news, Peter! Are you listening? You know, that's what we ought to do. Let it be done. We have to serve the Lord that way. You think the Lord wants you to just serve him half-hearted? 
okay, we got to go out here and do this again. You think the Lord wants you like that? You think the Lord wakes up that way? You think he, he renews his mercy every day? You think he's like that? I can't do what I could do when I was at these two people's age. And I can't do what I could do at some of you older ones, 40, 50 years old. But at 71, I can do whatever God wants me to, and give me the ability to do at 71. Amen. As long as I can walk through the doors of the church, I'm going to be there. As long as i got a voice to witness, I'm going to be there. As long, as long as I can read my Bible, I'm going to read my Bible. As long as I can pray, I'm going to pray until the Lord calls me home. Right, yes. Or he takes me either way. It doesn't matter. Because I know one of these days I'm going to be with Jesus and I'm going to have a body and I'm going to have a life that's eternal life and this here will just be like a mist. It's like a vapor, the Bible says. My life. Oh, listen, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be grand. It's going to be great. But you know what? What we do for the Lord is the only thing that counts. You know, the Bible wrote that the word of God put that in there not to beat up on Peter although Peter was guilty but was to warn us that we ought to be faithful we ought to be true right? right. let me ask you something you wives if your husband was faithful to you but he only messed up one time he only cheated on you once was he faithful? Huh. Do you know my Lord and Savior says if, if we confess our sin he is faithful to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Peter went out and wept bitterly. I want to I want to I want to show you something. I want you to look, you know, Peter, of course, denying the Lord, cussing that he ever knew the Lord. I was going to say he's cussing like a sailor, but I'd probably say more like an Air Force guy. <laughs> but I want, you, I want you to look back at, oh, let me just read you Luke chapter 22 and verse 61. Peter remembered the words of the Lord, and he went out and wept bitterly. The Bible says, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the words of the Lord, which said in him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt die, me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Could you imagine when the Lord looked at him? Could you imagine the disappointment that was in his eyes? I'd hate to get to heaven. And the Lord said, you know, there were several times you denied me. There were, I, when Jesus looked at him, there wasn't just disappointment. There was conviction. There was conviction. Yes. He remembered the words of the Lord. You ever felt the Lord and all of a sudden remember what his commandment said? I witnessed to a couple one day that come out and visit us in, when I was in Perry and they were lived out in a place that called Sweet Home and it really wasn't a sweet home. Everybody looked at it like it was uh, uh, one of the worst places in Perry to go and me and, me and Brother Ed go out there and we're trying to catch this couple that came to the church and, uh, and her name was Debbie and I forgot what his name, what was his name? Do you remember him? Okay, but anyway, so we're out there visiting. Well, they're gone. We get to the house, they're gone. But on the front porch, there's about six, I think one woman and four guys or five. And I get out, and as soon as I step out, this one guy, happened to be the sister, I mean brother of Debbie, says, who in the blank, the blank are you? I said, I'm the preacher. I'm looking for so-and-so. And they're drinking, they're carrying well, they're not here. I said, they're not. 
And so anyway, I go up there and start waiting. Well, they start walking out, him and his wife. They come down there. And I get talking to him. And he probably is, is, uh, is uh, tall as Connor. And uh, so a little bit bigger, though, you know, a little heavier. And uh, he comes up, and he's talking to me. And I said, listen, I'm, let me ask you a question. If you used to die today, do you know for sure, according to the Bible, you'd go to heaven, or would you wonder about it? Oh, I'd go. I said, oh, you would? What makes you so sure you'd go to heaven? Oh, he said, I ain't done nothing wrong. I said, you ain't never done nothing wrong? No, I ain't never done nothing wrong. Well, I said, you know, the Bible says first commandment is, is uh, not to take the Lord's name in vain, to love the Lord. You know, and, and I'm going through the Ten Commandments. I said, you should, the Bible said, do not have another God before him. He said, I haven't done that. I said, okay. I said, have you ever took something that didn't belong to you? No, I ain't never done that. I said, have you ever told a lie? No, I ain't never lied. <laughs> Okay, so I said, listen, have you ever looked at another woman that wasn't your wife and lusted after her? He said, no, and about that time she elbowed him and said, you sure have. And I said, okay, now you're an adulterer and a liar. <laughs> and he started to walk away. I grabbed him by the arm. Brother Ed's over there. His eyes about that big around because he usually carries his pistol. He's retired Coast Guard and his eyes big. And I grabbed to hold him by the arm and I said, no, you ain't going nowhere. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what made me do that, but boy, I, I get to witnessing to him, and uh, his wife comes. She comes several times, but I never could get him in there. But boy, I tell you what, that, the experiences you get into. But you know, the first thing I did before I got out of the car, he said that was, hey, just tell him who you are, say I'm looking for him, and leave. That's what the flesh wanted to do. Sure. Hey, I'm a preacher, just tell him I come by and leave. But God didn't want that. He said, I want you to witness to him. I want you to tell him about the Lord. When I was pastoring in Guthrie, Oklahoma, Jim Byford, he was six foot seven, weighed 320 pounds, big, like a mountain. He had a knock on his door. All we're doing is passing out revival flyers to everybody. So we're passing them out. So I, we're just going from house to house, not really talking to anybody. I knock on his door and he opened the door and I handed one of them and Lord says witness to him. Well, when he opened the door, smoke barreled out of the door. And I'm sitting there looking at him like this. Uh, yeah, your name, Mr. Byford? Yeah, okay. Uh, I want to give you one of these. And the Lord says, I want you to witness to him. I don't want to witness to him. <laughs> you know, I want to witness this guy. You know, no, you witness to him. So I started talking to him. Led him to the Lord in his house. Amen. He came that Sunday, his wife, Helen, she got saved. Become one of the best members. He'd call me up when it was snowing one day and said, Preacher, we're going out visiting this Thursday night. I said, man, it's snowing. He said, yeah, Preacher, we got to go. I know a guy we need to go see. His Brother May. Brother May wasn't saved at that time. So anyway, I said, okay. So he I said, if you can come over here. So he comes over and picks me up. And we go over there and we and Brother May to the Lord. And his wife and his three children, just beautiful, they got in church and uh he said, see there, preacher, I told you we need to go. <laughs> what can you say then? Okay, we needed to go. You know, but sometimes when you witness, God opens up a door. It's just marvelous. So when you knock on somebody's door, are you witnessing somebody at work? Are you at the restaurant and the waitress comes over there? Listen, I was in Oklahoma City and the waitress come over there. She was a young lady. How, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? You're what, 25? 25, she was probably about that age, wasn't she, honey? And uh, so anyway, another preacher that I was preaching for, him and his wife was there. Was there somebody else there? It was just, yeah, one other person. Yeah, Ruth and Dean, the preacher, and, and me and uh, my wife. And uh, I, I was sitting on the outside, so I said, I said, man, what's your name? I don't remember what she said now. And I said, uh, we're gonna pray over our food here in a minute. Is there anything I can pray with you about? And she started bawling. She said, I just found out I have cancer. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I said, ma'am, I want to pray for you. And we prayed for her. You don't know what God's going to do with the person that's in front of you if you just share something like that and what God can do. And my wife can tell you, I can tell you hundreds of stories like that. 
that has been a blessing. And you'll have some people say no, but you'll have some that say it's got a great need in their heart. Now, I want to tell you something. Peter, at this point, is down and defeated. In John chapter 21, Jesus comes to him and says, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? He said, yea, Lord, thou knowest I, I love thee. He said, well, then feed my lambs. Then he goes to the second time and said, Peter, you love me more than these? He said, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love you, then you feed my sheep. Then a third time he said, Peter, you love me more than these? Peter said, got, of course, was upset. Why well, he was asking three times, said, yea, Lord, you know all things. You know I, I love you. He said, you feed my sheep. He denied him thrice. He had to confess him thrice. But God didn't leave him there. Look if you would at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. This is amazing. In Acts chapter 4, now Peter and John is hauled into the same court that Jesus was hauled in. Caiaphas the high priest is there. And in verse uh, uh, 8 of chapter 4, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done unto the implement man, by what means he is made whole, be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole, this is the stone which was set at naught by you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name given among he heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Boy, that's a whole different response than denying Jesus, I never knew him. He's the one on the hot seat. There's a difference when God forgives you and stirs you and fills your heart and gives you the strength by the Spirit of God to be a witness for Him. Amen. Listen, I want to tell you, I don't know where you're at in your life, but I know one thing. I don't want Jesus to be ashamed of me. I don't want to be caught in the wrong place and out of place. I want to be in place. Man, I want to be like that rooster. I mean, he showed up on time, right? I mean, he spoke up on time. I mean, he was right where the Lord wanted him. He said, my creator made me for this. I'm going to be here. I'm going to fulfill it. It ought to be the same way in our Christian life. Yeah, life's hard. We run into ups and downs. But you know, there's nothing that goes on in your life. Nothing that happens in your life that God don't want to be a part of. Amen. And he don't want to know. And he wants to help you through it. We're all going to go through different avenues, but Jesus will be with you all the way. Amen. I tell you, of all the things I've been through and all the things I've seen, one thing that haunts me is my neighbor that used to, that used to live across the street from me. He moved in when we were building our house. He wasn't there but about three months, maybe. Maybe that, if that long. I bought the house over there. And uh, I was building my house. And, and, and during that time, I had the MG, but we had a crew up there, and I was trying to keep the line down. He walks over, and we began to, it, we began to talk a little bit. And I, I come down, and I begin to talk to him, and I tell him I'm a preacher and everything. And, and uh, I told him I'd like to talk to him sometime. And, Okay, he said, all right. So he leaves, and oh, a few days later, he comes back over there. And I'm up there, and, and we come back down, and, and uh, I'm talking with him a little bit, and he told me he found out he had cancer. And uh, I said, man, let me pray for you. So I prayed for him, and I, he said, man, I'd like for you to come over and talk to me some Monday or Tuesday. And uh, this was leading up, this was real close to Christmas. So I, I waited to Christmas, around Christmas, I think it was about a week before, me and my wife carry a basket over there of some stuff, and we're going to talk to him, try to catch his wife too, and talk to all of them, you know, not just him, and there's no answer. And 
We thought they was home, but I guess they had a vehicle and was gone with it. So they don't answer. So anyway, I uh, left and go home. A week later, the ambulance shows up over there, picks him up and takes him off, and he dies. I'm going to see him at the judgment, and he's going to say, David, I asked you to come. I asked you to come and talk to me about the Lord. Was I busy building my house? Yeah. Was I ashamed of the Lord? No. Did I want to witness to him? Yeah. Did I? No. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be a Bible expert. You're not a judge. You're called to be a witness. All I got to do is tell them what I've seen and heard. Let me tell you what Jesus done for me. Just one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread, right? The old saying goes. Just be a witness where you're at. And when you get around the wrong crowd and it begins to monopolize the conversation, leave. <laughs> when you can come in and witness so you can be a testimony for the Lord and not get around and be out of place when you ought to be in place. Let's every day on their back clothes. <clears throat> I'm going to pray and music can go ahead and start. And if you need to come to the altar, you come on and pray. It's just us tonight. It's just you talking to God. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll move on every heart and life. And I pray, dear Lord, that uh, the message kind of was uh, not fully the way I intended the morning for what you had. I pray, dear Lord, that we'll take it right in our heart. Dear Lord, I think we we'll, I pray that we'll be faithful to serve you, faithful to be a witness and testimony. Lord, we'll be faithful to the house of God, and we'll be faithful to the word of God. We'll be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray that we would be a faithful